Well, hi there, folks, and welcome to Art Tips with John, the show that teaches you not only how to build your artistic talent, but also to build an artistic business as well. Welcome to today's show. Hi, folks, and in today's session, we are going to be looking at how to paint wolf fur and adding the detail onto wolf. This is an excerpt from our How to Paint Wolf course, available at outreachart.org. Hope you enjoy. Hi there folks, John Morris here and welcome to the School of Art Class 3. And uh, in this class guys we're going to be looking on how to put together the fur, we're going to be looking together how to put the shape together. Okay, so what I've got done here is we've looked at in the first two classes, I've got the eyes and the nose put together. Now I'm starting to add some shape and some definition onto the fur. As you can see, it's got a grey background. We've got a basic shape of a wolf's face. Now, if you need help doing this, what I encourage you to do is uh, possibly to get a print uh, of an outline laid up. You can sketch it out. You can use a projector, which will help you sketch. Um, and, and these are just little tips as well for beginning artists that I found really, really beneficial and very, very helpful. So what I'm doing here, I'm laying down some base colour and I'm just making some very, very straight shapes. And I'm thinking about the fur, thinking about the definition of the fur as well, all the time while we're doing these things. And that's what I want you to be thinking about in this tutorial as well, is the, the shape of the fur. It's not just, you know, vertical shape or horizontal shape. The fur goes around the, the shape of the, the wolf's head. Okay, so if you imagine it being that half banana shape that we talked about earlier on, it's going out and it's following the angles. And all we're doing here, we're just laying down some colour so as we can lay it down on the canvas and it's starting to come through um, just to give some basic indications and to lay some shape as to where the wolf is. <laughs> And you find that I do this from time to time, just hum to myself. Okay, so we're still doing the same thing, and I want you, you know, essentially you work it around the face. And uh, I'm going to show you the, the tutorial as an entirety, of course, so as you can get the idea. And as you can see here, I'm following the shapes, I'm following the shading. Now all I'm doing here is just with some white and some yellow ochre, and as you can see, it's a very, it's a bright paint. Um, and a bright colour, it's just laying some paint on the canvas. The reason that I'm doing this is because the canvas that I'm using at this point isn't uh, primed and it isn't gessoed. Um, so if I don't do this, what will happen is when I finish the wolf and I put it up, you'll be able to actually see through the canvas, the white will come, the white of the canvas will actually come through onto the, the painting itself. So we're doing this to lay a basic colour and give it a basic foundation. Uh, the foundation is really, really important. What this also does, it helps me to be able to lay out um, different shapes. As you can see here, I'm laying the shape of the snout, and this is something you're thinking about as well. We're going to go into more detail in this as the class um, continues and, cont and, and progresses. But we're just laying down the shape and the basic shapes now of the snout. As you can see, around the left side up to the, the um, part of the snout, there's, there's colour there, there's some fur outline, there's some detail that's there. Once I reach the snout, I've put it in pure white. Once I reach the bridge of the snout, I've made it grey. So I'm starting to lay down the shadows here. And I encourage you to do the same. If you need to pause this video, please do. And then you can take a look at you know, what I'm doing and the shape. Occasionally throughout this tutorial as well, guys, I'm going to be putting up photos, which I encourage you, um, you'll see the painting step by step, and I encourage you to stop and, and study the photos themselves. Study the photo that you are working from as well. That's really, really important. Um, and to, to really focus on the wolf that you are creating, not necessarily the one that I'm creating. If you need any help um, in learning, uh, I suppose, how to choose the correct photo for you and for your skill level and where you're at, then please do drop me a message and I will be here to help. Um, but what we're doing now, we're actually creating some fur techniques. Now this is done with white paint and I'm using a probably you can do this with the half inch brush I'm using a, uh, a straight edge brush and it works really really well I'm using the corner of it 
there's a lot of paint that's on there it's really firm and I'm just flicking down okay it's just down strokes and it's done really really quick um, so as you can actually um, begin to see the definition of the fur the shape of the fur um, you can actually start to almost feel the fur on the wolf's face and that's really the effect that we're going for here. It's the you know it's the banana shape, and it's following the angles. I cannot stress that enough to you folks. You have to follow the angles in this painting um, to really make this effective. If you just do all vertical shapes, it won't work. If you do horizontal shapes, it won't work. It has to follow the circle of the wolf's face. Here's a better angle of of the kind of stuff that we're working on right now. And as you can see, I've got the nose uh, laid out, and I've got the eyes laid out. If you haven't done the first two classes, which I hope you have done, um, mainly because they were all in the one uh, video, I think, um, then go back and restudy them. Um, but all we're doing here is just laying out a basic shape and some basic um, shadow. And, we're just, and this lesson really is learning on how to put down the the, the basic shape of the wolf. As you can see, the brush that I'm using here isn't too big. It's a, it's actually quite a small brush. You can do this a lot quicker with the, the half inch brush. And uh, But this I wanted to use to kind of show you, you know, get you feeling the, uh, the smaller brushes. Um, it's really good for putting fur on as well. If you need any help um, choosing brushes and then, you know, deciding what kind of brushes you would want and what work best for you, please do drop me a message um, and I will be more than happy to help. But we're just working backwards and forwards here and it just kind of gives the basic indication. Already that's starting to look like, a, you know, obviously the, the wolf's face. And it was a tremendous amount of fun doing this. Now down here we've got the, the, the basic dark colour and I put this in deliberately we've got a basic dark colour here and in between each line of the dark colour I'm putting a light colour now we do this because this is creating fur later on in this video you're actually going to see that I go back over and I put white or, or I, I, sorry I'll try that again that I put a dark colour on top of the, the light colour but I'm leaving just enough of that light colour through that you can actually see um, what's going on and what's happening and that's really important um, that we do that so as you can actually see um, what's going on you can see the development of the fur you can see the development of um, the shapes and the tonality and the shadow starting to come through uh, and that's really what we're looking for on this one don't forget as well guys what I was doing there was I was painting at the bottom of the canvas um, you want to make sure that all of your edges are covered because it gives it a more professional feel if you're not framing the painting in particular um, and it gives it that more authentic 3d effect um, so that's you know a little tip there of what I always do shadow shading fur on the bridge of the nose and that's what we're looking for here now, this is a really important technique when you start to work on the the, the nose and the snout what you're looking for essentially is the half banana shape okay so if you see where that white part starts on the on the, on the side of the snout on the left side and you run your finger across the screen to the right side where my hand is now that is a half banana okay it's the best way i can describe it to you and if you think about it like that it will give you so much more freedom and it will actually help you be, be able to envision the shape a lot more rather than oh it's just a snout and maybe you struggle with snouts but if I can give you something basic like that um, to think about then it may just make this technique a lot easier for you and as you can see there we go up and down up and down following the angles And we do the same on the other side as well. The lightest area is going to be the snout because it's the furthest away from his body. Oh 
I know this is a longer tuition guys, but I really wanted you to get this and to be able to see this. It was almost a really difficult thing to be able to stop at any one place. Here as you can see what I'm doing is I'm adding fur and uh, all we're doing here is with some white paint touched with a little bit of that grey colour that we made. So this is a very light grey and again is doing the same thing. As you notice I haven't changed brush. It's exactly the same brush and I'm just using upward strokes. Okay, now we're coming on to adding some highlight into the ears and we just do the exact same technique going to some white paint. On, on my wolf, his ears are very white, so what I'm doing here is just going to some white paint and working the angles, working the angles, working the angles. You're going to get tired of me saying that, but it's, look, that is it. You, you know, you're working the angles um, and you just upward flicks, upward flicks from the light area where you're painting the white out into that grey area and you can see there how it's creating that fur effect. We do not cover up all the dark paint because that is how we create that effect um, of fur and texture and shade and shadow. I have to say when I see things come to life like this it's, it's just even at this point in the painting it's just so exciting for me and I hope it is for you as well um, one odd little thing, I don't know if you've ever thought about this either, um, that the shape of this wolf's ear in particular, where the white is, um, and as it goes into the black, actually reminds me of a banana. When you cut a banana inside and you see all the little seeds, it's roughly the same shape as a wolf's ear, if that helps you at all <laughs> in, in any way. Um, I do tend to see things a little bit uh, uniquely. And uh, my, my wife sometimes says to me, you know, you, what, what on earth are you on about? So we're just doing the same technique now on the other ear. Uh, we're coming in with some white paint and a little touch of grey. And we're just adding some fur. And we're probably going to do this, you know, maybe five or six times. Um, we let it dry, we go back to it, we paint it, we let it dry, go back to it, paint it, let it dry. Tell it goes in, watch it, and doing the narration for it. Okay, what we're doing here, I've come in some black paint. Now, this is just pure Mars black, um, which is the paint that I'm using. And again, I'm working into the center of the ears and work from the center and flick out. Okay, and I'm just adding again some more uh, fur effects on the ears, which is what we're really looking for here. At this stage in the painting, we're now starting to create the finer detail. It doesn't want to be a perfect shape or, or a perfect circle or anything like that. It wants the basic indications of the fur. Okay, now that the area by the right ear is all dry, we can come in with some lighter grey and again do the same techniques that we did for the left ear. And we're just working around the bottom base of the, the centre of the ear and just adding those upward flicks that just give the illusion of fur and again the finer details we've got the brush on its side remember we're using a smaller filbert brush here and just working on out following all the angles of the ear around and around and around just going to work around the face just adding it in here and there. All these different colours and all these different little things are what really brings a painting to life. So it's exciting when you start seeing things come to life as you'd envision them. Do some downward strokes now. You can see doing that. And just blend that on up as well. And by now you should be starting to get a really, really good handle on putting together uh, the detail and to get the um, detail, but also um, how to build up colour and tone as well. I'm going to work a little bit more now on the bridge of the nose. We're going to come into some black touch of white, 
So you're going to have black primarily on one side and that whitish greyish colour we've got on the other side. And around the middle, just that. Come into some of this colours. Just here and there, I just want some indications really of different things happening. Just touching to some of the white around the, the area of the nose, just come in, just put some fur like effects. Okay, I'm going to wash the brush. slightly bigger filbert brush come into some of that white into some of the colours we made earlier on print on a little white just touch you see all I'm doing here is just flicking and then around the nose ok now we're going to start to whiten this area up a little bit I know you'll probably think why have we coloured it and why have we put tons of shadow on just to whiten it up We've done that, so when you do put the white on, you've got all these different tones and textures and things that are going on. As you can see there, right, okay, we'll come around here. It's just so you can see what's happening. Some more. I'm just going to work the face up in that direction. But now we've got tons and tons of shadow and colour and things on here. And this is another one where you may have to build it up over several sessions um, to, to get the desired effect, but that's fine. We're not in any humongous rush. One thing artwork will definitely teach you is how to be patient. I really do appreciate and value you watching this and taking the time to check this video out. If you liked it, please do feel free to tell me below. And like, share, comment and subscribe as always. And for more things, head to outreachart.org. We've got some brand new uh, videos that are up there and being uploaded all the time. And I would love you to be part of our community and our universe that we're putting together. Until next time, I will see you with another amazing art tip. And uh, I'll catch you next week. Take care.